corporations and governments are now planning to roll out not 100, not 10,000, but a million 5G emitting satellites around the world in the next decades without first assessing the potential impact not only to humans, but to our global ecosystems. I'm talking about insects, soil, water cycles, the climate, and everything in between. Are we in trouble? That's the question we're going to address in this new episode of the Smarter Tech Podcast. My name is Nick, the EMF Guy Pino. I'm an advocate for safe technologies, and I not only care about your health, but I care about the health of this planet. Of course, I'm an environmentalist at heart, and when I don't see electro pollution, I'm talking about the satellites, but also the cell towers, the Wi-Fi routers, everything we've built that emitting that's emitting these signals. When I see that this is not part of the discussion when it comes to the loss of species, the even the changes we experience in climate, or whether you you know you think that the it's uh, the planet is heating up or being colder, but if you believe that we're impacting ecosystems in a way that is destructive, why are we not talking about the impact of global electropollution? Is it that there's no science? We're going to discuss that as well. Today we talk with a guest called Dolph Zentige. Uh, Dolph is an entrepreneur with a diverse background in fiber optics, telecommunications, AI, and data mining. Uh, he now has joined forces with uh, Eric from uh, Analemma. Analemma is a tool to help uh, water regain its structure. But today, Dolph is talking about something else. Not just water structure, but how EMFs and this global electropollution is impacting the planet as a whole. Let's dive right into my discussion with Dolph, uh, and that's the second time I have it on the podcast. You'll see this discussion goes much wider than just the water structure and could really talk about the future of this planet. Let's dive into it. All right, welcome to Smarter Tech. I'm here with Dolph Zentige. And uh, Dolph, this is the second time you're here on the podcast. I had you to talk specifically about uh, the invention of the Analemma wand and water structure. But today we're diving into, into a topic that is uh, equally as important as water structure, but going wider in our discussion. You told me at the end of our interview together that you had uh, specific information and you had done studies on how electromagnetic radiation or electromagnetic pollution uh, by cell towers, but also now by satellites, might be impacting the planet as a whole through ecosystems. And then last week, as we're recording this, you shared with me certain slides that were quite shocking around what could be happening to the planet because of our unabated use of these EMFs. So I'm going to let you run with it and maybe let us know how you stumbled upon this effect and 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 realize that maybe we're doing a grave mistake by rolling out these technologies and and not looking at how nature might be impacted yeah well i'm very pleased uh, to uh, talk about this uh, nick um the effects are really serious uh, over the last 15 years a whole team of scientists uh, worked uh, upon what are the impacts upon EMFs. And everybody is talking about what is the impact on health, et cetera, et cetera, and especially on the brains and then ionization, non-ionization, can it go through the body, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we did different studies. And maybe I can show you some of them. Sure, that would be to. lovely, yes. What we found out in, an, in a very early step is that uh, the effect of EMF is very much connected to water. A lot of people are not aware of that, but water is not only H2O. Uh, most waters in the world, drinking water, uh, waters in the oceans, they have bacteria. In each drop of water, there are a lot of bacteria in it. 
Those bacteria have an effect upon every biological system all over the world, in the oceans, in the rivers, in the soil, everything. And here you see, for instance, uh, some, uh, as an image, you see the bacteria that are, can be found in a drop of water. Well, what is happening, if we go to the next sheet, each drop of water contains what I just told you, bacteria. But these bacteria can be found all over the world, especially in the soil and in the agriculture. Uh, one spoon of soil has billions of bacteria, and they define if the crops is going to be good or bad, together with the fungi. Mm -hmm. The same bacteria can be found in our intestines. Many of the bacteria that can be found into the soil are also part of our internal biological systems. We have around in our intestine between eight to 1,200 different types of bacteria. They are the, our defense system. Uh, without those bacteria, we, we cannot have the resistance against any disease. So many of the, the, the resistance in the body, 70 to 80% of the body is coming out of these uh, bacteria that we found in our intestine. So what we did is that we were wondering, okay, suppose that you are going to have an effect with, with those four and five year radiation, but also with, with, with x-rays and other things, or water. And water can hold a part of those EMFs for a long part in its memory. What will be the effect of that? So we did a test in the agriculture. Why was that? Well, this is going to take place on Mother Earth. This is planet Earth in five years from now, surrounded by the EMF satellites. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're planning a million satellites within a few decades now. Can you imagine? Normally, we are surrounded by the sun and the moon radiation. But this is going to be how Mother Earth is going to look like from outside. And then I do not even talk about the mobile phones, the billions of mobile phones and wi in-house. So we are going to create a complete electromagnetic field around this globe while water is constantly absorbing electromagnetic waves. So this was from, for us the concern, if this is going to take place, has, every, has any person looked to the effects of this? What is going to be the effect on the climate? What is going to be the effect upon the soil? What is going to be the effect upon our food system? Well, we did a test, and here in the green part you see the electricity, the, the, the energy that we could measure in a plant. This is when a plant is very positive, and this is going to happen, the energy level, when a plant is going to die. So what we did is that we took water, rainwater, and we beamed for six hours 5G through the water. And then we gave it to the plants. And what happened was this, oh, was that this energy level remained in the plant for two weeks. That was for us a reason to move on, and then we went to the International Water Institute, WETSUS. WETSUS is a uh, center of excellence, worldwide known, and they have some of the best water researchers in the world. And uh, then we looked, what is going to be the case if we are going to beam those electric magnetic radiation through the water, what is going to be the effect upon the bacteria? What I showed you in the first image is that each drop of water has the bacteria, but they are always in balance. Yeah. Modern, modern nature created a balance in those bacteria. So we can drink it. It's good for us. Nothing wrong. But what is going to be the effect? And then they tested it upon 5G, especially upon the 5G that is now into the market. We will get 5G in different stages, by the way. It's not one frequency, it's a number of frequencies. Mm -hmm. We were testing now those frequencies that can be found on the market. So this one. These are the ones that we will get in the future. We haven't got a clue what the interference is gonna do in this world if we are going to be in different radiations 
including 4G and Wi-Fi through each other. Nobody ever did a test on that. So we took the opportunity to do that test on the radiation that is now available in the market. Well, if you know what's happening, you have the towers and you have your mobile phone. The mobile phone has a different sinus. It's a block. That is the iPhone to your ear. These are the emitters. So we have two waveforms. One of them is the one you hold to your head, and the other one is that you get from outside. A lot of people think that if, if you put away your phone, which, by the way, in many cases is very smart, then you don't have 5G. That's not true. 5G is coming into your house. Anyway. For sure. Yeah, and there's more and more uh, cell towers closer Absolutely. to people's Absolutely. homes with 5G. Yeah. Absolutely. And then on top of that, you have your Wi-Fi at home as well. For sure. So what we did, we, uh, we were testing certain bacteria, especially the E. coli's. They can be found into our body and into animals as well. And uh, we looked to different types of bacteria. Why was that? Because the year before, we tested four types of bacteria, and one of them was candida. That creates fungi into your intestine as well, and that can have severe problems. And we saw already the effect. We did a lot of tests in agriculture, and we saw some effects already in the uh, fungi that was increasing, but also in the changes in the bacteria. So we were going with a whole team of scientists with uh, three professors from different universities and then a PhD student. Uh, we were going to have a look at what is going to be the effect upon water in those bacteria. So uh, we beamed with the 5G, we beamed exactly in the right order, in an atomic-free bunker. We beamed in a specific order the water samples, and we tested it with all kinds of equipment. And then at the end of the day, we saw that after six hours of radiation, so not seven times 24, but only six hours, we saw already that we could see damaged cells and dead cells in those bacteria, depending upon the quality of water. Water, if it has more coherence, can, uh, can protect yourself much better against the harmful radiation, but not every water can do that. So we saw already, we tested four types of water, and we saw an effect on all types of water as well. So we did here the cultures, the incubation, the washing, and then the concentration and adjustments. With a lot of data, and this was, uh, I, I can give you all the data, but uh, it is all about the conclusion. The mm -hmm. conclusion is that uh, the E. coli, the frequencies for six hours, had a damage on the cell membrane. That is big. If your cell membrane is damaged, then you can get all kinds of diseases. That means that the whole coherence into your body is out of control. That is a serious, serious issue. And then you are very vulnerable for other bacteria and all kinds of viruses as well. The differences were not incredible big, but big enough that we could see a difference already after six hours. Suppose we continue 7 times 24 and we have different radiations. In other words, the radiation tends to change the behavior of a cell based upon the cell properties. Now we're going to do and do the testing on RNA, but we saw here that the water has an increase of the death of the E. coli, and also not only the death but also the damaged the damaged cells were also increasing. So we saw end dead cells and damaged cells in those bacteria. This is only, these, are, these were only two bacteria. We have seen already in the past that other bacteria give a similar effect. So what does it mean? What is the outcome of this? Yeah. The, out, the outcome is very important, and I'm going to close this. Uh, what is the outcome? The outcome is that 
our food chain is uh, is in danger, in big danger. Because if the radiation continues and the rainwater with all those satellites, if they beam through the clouds and the rainwater already has that in its memory, and the rainwater is coming onto the soil, then it has a huge effect upon our food chain. We will get a change in the bacteria and fungi all over the world. Not only that, our drinking water will change. And I spoke already with some uh, specialists in, uh, who are specialists in, in the ocean, and they see that already the bacteria and, the, and, and all the algae into the ocean can change as well. This can change our climate in a dramatic way. So we only think in terms of what is the effect upon our brain and our mood and everything. This whole discussion is much bigger. It can have a worldwide effect if we continue with sending out all those satellites into the world and having all that 4 and 5G without proper testing of water. This testing was done with one of the best water institutes in the world. We did multiple tests and the outcome is constantly the same. We create a big problem. Yeah, so and and E. coli, you know, a lot of people think about it as something dangerous, like, oh, E. coli is food poisoning. But what I learned a few years ago, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that you need E. coli as part of the human microbiome in most people, if I recall correctly. And that's probably something that is essential to soil biology. So it's not, I think we're kind of thinking about the good and the bad bugs, but it should be more, what is the balance of That's these species, what, correct? What you say is completely correct. There is a balance in those bacteria. There is not good and bad. Yeah, sure, there are some very bad ones, but normally they are in balance. And we take out the balance and then they will become harmful. Hey, let me interrupt this podcast for a second. I want to tell you about one of the EMF protection or health supporting tools that I really believe in and which in the end also helped me finance the costs of this show. Since writing my book back in 2017, it has become clear to me that a lot of people understand the dangers of EMFs very well, but struggle when it comes to getting started and actually implementing what they know they should be doing to reduce their exposure. And this is why I teamed up with Brian Hoyer, who's one of the top EMF mitigation specialists in North America, and we created a simple step-by-step -step EMF protection course that will show you exactly how to minimize EMFs in your home, step-by-step. It's called Electro Pollution Fix. We've had hundreds of health conscious people just like you take the course and the feedback has been mind blowing. This course is the best way to stop feeling overwhelmed or confused about EMF protection and be able to take action, reduce your risks and make your family safer. So check out Electro Pollution Fix just go to electropollutionfix.com and you can enter the coupon code SMARTER at checkout to save an entire $100 off of your course membership. So enjoy the discount and back to the podcast. Yeah, exactly. Like a, an overgrowth of Candida. What, what did you find about Candida? I know this is a very common issue I hear from people. I have Candida, I have yeast overgrowth. Yeah. Uh, could could EMS be contributing to what people yeah. are, are getting with, you know, candida overgrowth or just a disrupted microbiota? That's very plausible, isn't it? I think that uh, microbiota are in uh, are in big trouble if this continues. Yes, because also there we will see an unbalance, and not only in 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 the in the human uh, gut but also animals. And that also will have an effect upon the soil. A lot of animals are also needed to uh, to to help the soil to improve. And uh, on top of that, the soil will be in big, big trouble. How do you get it back? That's that's the problem. Good question, and that's a that's the question with many agents that we're spraying. You know, glyphosate is destroying the soil as well. But now, if you combine it 
with another agent in the form of electropollution that is disrupting ecosystems in that way i'm only left to wonder what what's going to happen so it's it's it, it and and your your concern is shared with uh, different papers I'm going to share in uh, in a few minutes after this interview uh, by um, um, Levitt, Lai, Henry Lai, and Manville talking about wildlife, uh, wildlife and plants and how they're impacted by low-level EMS. But something else that I have to mention is the Tahiri group from Iran who's been running experiments on Wi-Fi and cell phone exposure and how this makes certain strains of E. coli or other dangerous uh, bacteria in the scope of hospitals, uh, how it makes them more resistant to antibiotics. So in a sense, it also plays with the resistance to antibiotics of certain pathogens. So even for humans and livestock and anything living, it's kind of playing with this balance of how we can deal with things. So if we have, you know, these super bugs, both in crops, in the soil, uh, super bugs, super fungi, super bacteria that I, I keep hearing about because my big brother is in permaculture uh, here in Quebec. So he's a he's a expert in uh what kind of challenges people in agriculture are facing and they're facing insects that are resistant to certain treatment, for example. So it makes it more difficult to control crop yield. If you have a bad year and you have a bunch of parasitic insects, but now these insects have grown stronger to certain or have developed certain resistance, uh, we might face and we are we are currently facing these these wide problems with certain insects or certain ticks also or certain bacteria that are kind of causing a lot of problem in in crops uh what do you know about crop yield and emfs is i i haven't heard many discussions about that there's one of my colleagues from australia who told me that it was impacting crop yield or uh, dairy farmers were impacted by by um, ambient exposures. Uh, in France, there was this case last year or two years ago from uh, dairy farmers who could prove causality where the cell towers were installed and their dairy production went down because it stressed the animals. They won in court and the cell tower got removed. But of course, you know, what should really happen is no cell towers at all because all animals, including humans, are being stressed. What do you know about crop yield and whether anyone is studying this, some sort of regulatory body? Because, again, that would be another angle where we can make sure that people take this seriously is if people are losing money on every yard of land, maybe they would get interested and say, my God, we're going to sue the telecoms. Well, we are now working with a team of scientists to see if we can uh, study uh, the effects upon this on, on our vegetables and on our crops. Yeah. Uh, the first outcome is already, yes, it has an effect. The biggest effect will come when all the satellites will become active and they grow every week, the number yeah. of satellites. Yeah. And I've heard already from many places in the world that suddenly there are strange diseases in taking place. And a lot of farmers are questioning what's happening. Uh, everybody talks only about the chemical compounds that they put in there or the glyphosate. Now there is another effect, and that effect is much bigger than a lot of people thought about. And that has to do with this water effect. Nobody has ever tested it, tested it on water. What is the effect on water? Well, this is the case. Water is a communicator. If you damage your communication system, into your biological system, then this is the effect. Yeah, yeah, this is very, very concerning to me that this is happening. And what do we know, or what do you know about what environmentalist groups are might be looking at this? Um, I know that I'm following Arthur Furstenberg, who has been, you know, sounding the alarm about satellites. I, I have to give him full full credit. I learned about the satellites from him. 
years before they started rolling out with uh, the SpaceX and other companies. Uh, and of course, we already had a few satellites, a few hundreds, in fact, for different communications. And of course, there's satellites we don't know about because they're classified and whatnot. But now we're talking about the number that is just tremendous. And that's thanks to Arthur Fersenberg. But something he mentioned is that the environmentalist groups such as Greenpeace seem to be completely oblivious to these issues. They they want to talk about chemicals. Yes, they want to talk about fossil fuels and blah, 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 but not about electropollution. It seems to be radio silence even among the most fierce activists for nature. Have you found any organization that is interested to talk about no. the issue or at least look no. at the data? No. Until now, they're completely blind, and I hope it will change because we need an international discussion upon this. This has nothing to do with pro or against. This has to do with our planet. This is much wider. And uh, if we are going to damage the oceans that absorb the CO2 and have to give us oxygen, if that is all already going to change in the coming years with just a few percentage, and the effect is already incredible, uh, then it will have an effect upon our heat system. It has an effect upon the Gulf Stream. It has an effect on so many issues. But the reason is that they never thought about this. Nobody ever thought that water can have such an impact upon all of this. And that is why those studies that we have done over the last two or three years now have to be published and we have to come up and tell the people this is the outcome of the studies and please repeat them as much as you can. We want to help you, but this discussion must take place. 100%. Thank you so much, Dolph. Uh, I'll, what I'll do is uh, I'll... We'll include a few links to studies that uh, I shared. And also, please let us know. And I will send out to my newsletter if uh, this gets uh, in a peer-reviewed publication. And if you hear about environmentalist groups, and if you're listening to this and you care about nature, well, let me know what you think. Should should Greenpeace and um, I, I don't know if it's... Uh, the what is it, WWF and all these, you know, large environmentalist groups, should they be aware of this? Should they look into electropollution? They should. Uh, yeah. And and so far, I've seen one report years ago that identified uh, 5G as an increasing risk for the environment. I cannot recall what in, uh, organization this was. It was in the EU, if I recall correctly. But you know, it is barely talked about for an issue that is increasing by the day and where the science is becoming more and more clear. So it's very bizarre to me. I think it, it might have to do with how much we are addicted to this technology in the end, but I think we're just uh, making a, a grave, grave mistake. So, well, thank you so much, Dolph. How can people find more about you and uh, stay updated with this research? Do you have separate projects that you... Um, where people can find you besides Analemma, or is that something you're going to share on your newsletter? Uh, we're going to share it in a different way, and uh, I keep you posted upon that. Okay. So uh, we keep you informed so uh, that we can bring this uh, important information as soon as possible to a wide audience. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. I hope you liked this episode with Dolph Zentege. I'm going to... Spend a few more minutes here. If you want to review the science, um, I want to give you good resources to read. And if you're still wondering, well, you know, that's just one guy doing some, some sort of small experiment on how EMFs are impacting the microbiome of water in rainwater, right? And the implications on soil biology and maybe on, you know, nature as a whole. So that's just one guy, right? Well, that's that's incorrect. In fact, the data that I've been seeing is very, very compelling in the last few years on EMFs and the effects on 
all of biology. And I want to point you to a few reviews here. One of them is by uh, Blake Levitt and Henry Lai with Manville. And they, they in fact, have authored other things that I'm going to show you as well. It's called Effects of Non-Ionizing Electromagnetic Fields on Flora and Fauna. It's a three-part paper that is very, very important. So what do they say? Well, basically, they say that long-term chronic low-level EMF exposure standards, which do not now exist, should be set accordingly for wildlife and environmental laws should be strictly enforced. What do they talk about? Well, they talk about the fact that now we are exposed to so many sources of EMFs, including the cell towers, and it has special effects on wildlife, cyto and genotoxic effects that have been observed in laboratory research on animal models, and that can be extrapolated to wildlife. So that's not only on the animals, but also on plants. Uh, they recommend certain directions and things to study. I, I, I will just glance over that, but basically... What they say is this, wildlife loss is often unseen and undocumented until tipping points are reached. So a robust, a robust dialogue regarding technology's high impact role in the field of electroecology needs to commence right now, right? And we're very late on this. Uh, they have a second paper called Low Level EMF Effects on Wildlife and Plants, What Research Tells Us About an Ecosystem Approach. Another good paper to review if you are interested in this. Uh, addressing Wildlife Exposure to Radio Frequency Electromagnetic Fields, Time for Action. That's a paper just from, you know, a few months ago at this point. Uh, we call for a common worldwide agenda that would prioritize research on wildlife exposure to radio frequency electromagnetic fields and an independent organization to address the issue. They say basically this, there's rapid global expansion of mobile communication network, an urgent requirement to investigate and tackle the possible effects of EMF radio frequency radiation that is on wildlife. So we're late because it's already there and now they're planning a million satellites, right? So we're always behind on research and that's one of the tragedy of our modern rollout of technologies is that, well, now they're saying, you know, now we have the data to say we're probably in trouble and we want to know if we're a little bit in trouble, a lot in trouble and how much we're impacting ecosystems. But for technology that's already been rolled out, and is rolling out to this day with more and more and more of these towers. With 5G, it's uh, just increasing the densification and increasing the levels of this global electropollution, so to speak. And also the satellites that are now circling the globe. And what's planned by multiple corporations and government is, again, a million satellites that's going to be emitting these frequencies. Uh, something I mentioned during the episode is the Tahiri group who are uh, from Iran. Uh, evaluation of the effect of a Wi-Fi router and mobile phone simulator on the anti antibacterial susceptibility of pathogenic bacteria. You have Listeria, a type of Listeria, and a type of E. coli. I won't try to pronounce all of it. I'll butcher it severely. What they found is that basically... Exposure to Wi-Fi or this RF simulator, which is supposed to imitate a cell phone signal, can significantly alter the inhibition zone diameters and growth rate. So basically, it can make these microorganisms that are known to be very problematic in hospitals more antibiotic resistant. And I wanted to talk about that because, again, sometimes we, we forget about it. We talk about EMFs and say, well, I don't feel well. I get a headache. I don't sleep well. And we turn off the phone and all is fine. But there's a wider discussion to be had. And I'm just sorry it's not as convenient or as easy as uh, putting something on airplane mode or telling you to wire up your computer, but it needs to be talked about, which is 
what are we doing to ecosystems with this rollout of this technology? And including two small ecosystems on your skin, in your gut, everywhere on your body, there's bacteria. There's bacteria that can be patent that can become a pathogen because it's an overgrowth, including fungi such as Candida, as we talked about with Dolph. And it looks like Wi-Fi is impacting that. And so are mobile phones. Or at least there are indications that it is. So that's something that Professor Holly Johansson has uh, shared with me in the past. And I got to give him full credit here. And to this day, it's one of the most concerning angle of how are we impacting our microbiome? And for what it's worth, some people that use a phone use it very close to the intestine. Right, right next to the gut. Something to think about. What is it doing to the good bacteria and to the, let's say, the potentially pet, uh, bacteria that become a pathogen, right? So a last one here is by Alain Thiel, um, Marie-Claire Kamertz, and Balmori. Sorry to butcher their name. And this one is from November 2023, Biological Effects of Electromagnetic Fields on Insects, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. What do they say? Let's see. Biological effects on the non-thermal EMF on insects are clearly proven in the laboratory, but only partly in the field. Thus, the wider ecological implications are still unknown. There is a need, need for more field studies, but uh, extrapolating from the lab laboratory as is common practice in ecotoxicology already warrants increasing the threat level of environmental M EMF impact on insects. So there's already something so much that we should do something about it right now. But where are these groups? Who do you know in your circles who is an environmentalist at heart who could look at these studies and let me know what they think? Because in the end, that's a discussion. But at least along with the chemicals that we're spraying everywhere, we should be talking about the EMFs that we're also rolling out everywhere and how these combined exposures are impacting our ecosystems. So I hope you like the podcast. Please share it. Um, please share it widely, as wide as you can, to people who care. This is an angle that I have not looked at that much in my book and in my work because I tend to focus on, you know, the effects on you, on your everyday life, on your energy levels, on me. You know, I'm gag. People want to hear about avoidance of brain tumors, avoidance of be becoming more and more symptomatic from these exposures, but we need to talk about nature as well. So I hope you appreciate the angle today and I will see you next time on the Smarter Tech Podcast. See ya, take care. In case this wasn't already obvious, the information provided in this podcast is not intended to replace medical advice. We always recommend that you review this information with a functional medicine practitioner or environmental medicine doctor who is up to date with the latest information on the dangers of EMFs and the best practices around electro hypersensitivity, just to name these two things. And if you want to support my work, please consider sharing this episode with people you care about. You can also also invest in my book, courses, or recommended products found at theemfguy.com. Thank you.